Welcome to Whips in the Dungeon 301.11. Today we're going to talk about the whip flurry and several different ways that you could possibly set up this activity, whether it be done early in a dungeon party or late in a dungeon party, or whether you create a whole whip event on a weekend or a Saturday night around the concept of whip flurry. I want you to consider the idea of multiple whip throwers or multiple tops being involved with uh, a whip catcher, sometimes more than one whip catcher at the same time. So let's talk about different variations of the whip flurry. Let's first talk about the round robin. In the round robin, you might have a St. Andrew's cross or uh, some place in the dungeon where your whip catcher is standing, uh, but because of other equipment around in the room, there might not be enough people for several people to throw at one time so you might only be able to have one whip thrower throwing at the whip catcher at any one moment. In a round robin, you might have four whip throwers all ready and available to throw. And in the round robin, the first whip thrower throws for one song and then steps out. And the next whip thrower steps in and maybe throws for a song or a half of a song and then the second whip thrower steps out, and the third whip thrower steps in, and so on and so forth. And the whole time you're doing that, you might have a spotter or a DM watching the whip catcher reading body language, because the round robin can go on and on and on as long as the whip catcher's enjoying it and wants to continue. So that's one idea uh, called the round robin. Now we're going to go to um, more of a whip circle kind of concept. If we put the whip thrower in the center of the dungeon, then you really need to have an, a lot of space or you do it early or do it late in the evening where there's enough room for a whip circle in a 360 degrees around the whip catcher who's standing in the center. It's nice if you have a hard point in the dungeon so that person can, can be restrained overhead in case their legs give out. Then beyond the whip circle, you need to, either need to have the audience or the, uh, the voyeurs back far enough where you actually need, uh, let's say everyone's throwing a four foot signal whip, you need to create a safety circle around that whip circle so that no one gets hit with a whip. And then, then you need to look at uh, the whip circle as being uh, 360 degrees, how many people can throw. I'm going to suggest the optimum number is four people or less. Uh, if you have more than four people, uh, the way the circle's designed, uh, you, you just run out of space. So each person has about 95, 90 degrees or so. Uh, roughly to throw in. Then when you start looking at these styles we've talked about, if everyone's throwing horizontal style in the whip circle, it seems to work easier. Uh, or if everyone's throwing a forward figure eight, it all seems to work easier. When you have a ver variety of styles, if half of your whip throwers are throwing forward figure eights and half of your whip throwers are throwing horizontals, I recommend you alternate those uh, so that the styles don't conflict. And then you can kind of think also of how you're going to do this. Is everyone going to throw simultaneously? Or are you going to throw in a, a round robin? Or are you going to actually choreograph it where a whip thrower one throws for the verse of the first song when the chorus comes in? All the whip throwers throw simultaneously. For the second verse, whip thrower two throws. Then the chorus, they all throw simultaneously, so on and so forth. So there are a number of variations. You need to negotiate with your whip catchers so you have visual and nonverbal signals so that they know when the whip throwers need to ease up. But the whip flurry can be a real fun social event that's a different way of sharing whips with a whip catcher. And today's key phrase is fourth position.